This is the first in a five-part series about the classic Waco open cockpit biplanes as modelled by Golden Age simulations. There are seven different models here sold in two separate payware packages but they're all in some sense variations on the basic Waco Model 10. Each aircraft here is modelled on a specific real-world aircraft so it isn't necessarily a definitive example of the factory type. Uh, these aircraft were often modified over the years and the paperwork often lagged or was lost. In any event, there were something like 65 factory variations of open cockpit Warcos and the way models were numbered wasn't always consistent. The first aircraft we're going to look at isn't a Warco at all. This is a Curtis JN4 or Jenny and it was pretty much state of the art in 1915. It was designed as a World War I trainer and uh, almost 7,000 of these were produced for the United States, England, Australia and Canada. We're only interested in the front end of this aircraft because it's built around a Curtis OX-5 engine. The OX-5 was a water-cooled V8, uh, produced a fairly paltry 90 horsepower and was pretty unreliable thanks to, among other things, its uh, exposed valve gear and a single magneto ignition. But it did have one thing going for it, which was that by 1919 there were more than 12,000 of them in circulation and they were very cheap. This was a period of huge growth for aviation and all that military surplus hardware meant that every man and his dog could buy an engine and try to build an aeroplane in his backyard. Now then, George Weaver was such a man, a pilot and a flight instructor, who became the W in Waco when he joined up with a couple of ex-Curtis employees to form the Weaver Aircraft Company in 1920. The company was renamed the Advance Aircraft Company in 1924 when Weaver left, but the Waco brand was well and truly established, and by 1926 they led the field with their Model 9, which was the predecessor to this aircraft. The company continued to innovate, thanks largely to Charlie Myers, another experienced barnstormer, who in early 1927 pushed for an all-new Model 10 instead of an increment of the successful Model 9. And uh, by the end of that year, the company's sales accounted for 40% of all small aircraft sold across the country. So this is an example of uh, an early Model 10. Uh, this one has a Curtis OXX6 in place of the OX5. The OXX6 had a larger capacity in dual mag so it was somewhat more reliable. Now the Curtis engines were water cooled and uh, like the 9 before it the Waco 10 had its lines rather interfered with by the need for a radiator. This was hung above the front cockpit beneath the upper wing. Uh, as we'll see later the company tried several other engines but uh, in something of an unexpected sequel the Basic 10 got a new air-cooled version of the OX-5 in 1931. This was a heavily modified OX-5 produced by the Milwaukee Parts Corporation. Uh, the so-called tank engine, which was named after its designers, featured a completely new top end with dual mags and it was certified as a retrofit to the Waco 10 by that time redesignated GXE. This is a 10 or GXE uh, with the tank engine fitted and you can see that ugly radiator is gone. The tank engine was more powerful than the OX5 but in practice the performance of the GXE with the tank engine was to all intents and purposes the same as an OXX6 equipped 10. As far as handling goes this was quite an easy aircraft to fly, no real vices other than that woefully unreliable engine that would stop or throw a valve fairly regularly. It had excellent short field performance, although steering on the ground was an issue because it only had a fixed tail skid. In fact, it's pretty much impossible to achieve any reasonable turn radius in the simulator, so you might find you need to go into slew mode and spin it in place. Now, the handling notes suggest a power-on approach at 55 miles per hour for the best short field performance, and the drag increases rapidly in the flare, which means it'll put down more or less as soon as you cut the power. As with any flapless tail dragger, you can dump speed and height quickly with cross controls. This also helps keep the field in sight, of course, because you fly it from the back seat. Uh, you will find this aircraft seems to have a lot of inertia, and it keeps a lot of that sideways component as you straighten up. This means you do have to have your wits about you when putting it down. Once on the ground, it stops very quickly, partly because of that draggy tail skid. So that's the basic Model 10, or GXE, as it came to be called, which is, if you like, the common ancestor of all the aircraft we're looking at in this series. In part two, we're going to look at what happens when you take that Model 10 airframe and add a better engine.